Hey there, YouTube. So to start out, even though I am a new YouTuber, I am very surprised that I have not received any mean or uncalled for comments. Except for today, I did receive one on uh, my most viewed video, which is Scary Long Period Tremors. If you guys haven't seen that, you should go see that. I actually have his comment pinned. It says, you obviously have no geology education whatsoever. What you're looking at is not a tremor of any kind. Small activity is common at all stations, everywhere. When you do not know what you are talking about, try asking a professional, even though I did. Go back to school before you make yourself out to be an idiot. You are an idiot. <laughs> Number one, this isn't geology. This is volcanology and seismology. Number two, here's my reply. Thanks for the support. Actually, background activity is normal, but when they coincide at the exact same time for the exact same length of time, with each graph showing a diluted waveform the farther you are from the epicenter, that shows this tremor was indeed real. You must not have watched my videos because each time this tremor occurs, the tilt meters show increased tilt at the appropriate time. Also, SO2 emissions increase during this time as well. I have contacted USGS, but the reply made me even more concerned than normal. Thank you for the constructive criticism. I am always looking to expand my knowledge. I don't know everything, but I do know this tremor was not normal. Multiple people I have contacted have confirmed this. Hopefully you decide to do some digging on your own. I still have the data compiled, so if you'd like to see it, please email me. By the way, do you realize most of these monitors are surrounded by concrete? Seriously guys, a lot of these are in concrete bunkers. I'm not joking. Not all of them, but a lot of them are in concrete bunkers. Uh, so wind, car vibrations, and etc. would not appear, depending on the severity of the vibration. Seismology is not new to me. God bless, friends. Sounds like you might be from the USGS. Well, obviously, he did not watch any of my videos. Obviously. And neither does he apparently know how to correlate seismic data from one graph to another. <laughs> oh, well. Well, let's move on. So, guys, remember when I showed this graph for December 4th? This is Missoula, Montana, long period vertical, December 4th, 2017. And I predicted that the tremor would reappear most likely as strong before. <clears throat> well, I was mostly wrong, and I do apologize for that. Here's the same graph next day, December 5th, as you can see up here. It sort of reappeared, but it diminished quickly and was not nearly as strong as the tremor in my video, Scary Long Period Tremor. Notice how this tremor appears to subside around 1600 UTC. Please keep that time in mind. From 1500 to 1600 UTC. Keep that in mind. There it is right there. See the increased activity? Here's Red Lodge, Montana, long period vertical, December 5th, 2017, the same day. Well, it was confirmed on multiple graphs. You can see it's showing the increase at the same time and the decrease at the same time. Notice around, again, 1600, it started to decrease. Notice that. So I was half correct. <laughs> well, here's Bozeman, Montana, December 5th, 2017, the same time as well. And you can see an obvious increase and decrease at the same exact time, showing it did pick up the same tremor, or whatever the hell it is. And just so you guys get a gist of where these graph locations are, here is Red Lodge, Montana. Here's Bozeman. There's Missoula. We got Boulder Array Site 6, and in this area, we got Newport, Washington, NLWA, which is Neilton Lookout, Washington, and WRAK, which is Wrangell Island, Southeastern Alaska. And if you guys are ever confused, or like that one person thought I was using the same graph over and over, here is the title, there is the channel, and this is the start of the graph. So we got WRAK, which is Wrangell Island, Alaska, starting at December 5th, 3 o'clock UTC, which they all use the same time code, which is UTC. And notice again, around 1600, it starts to diminish here as well. It showed the same activity, literally. It really did, because it diminishes the same exact time. That is not a coincidence. Surface noise cannot do that. Background activity cannot do that. Whatever this was, it was picked up in Missoula, Montana, and Bozeman as well, and Red Lodge, Montana, in that area too. But notice how the tremor appears to subside, again, as the previous graphs. If something is confirmed on multiple graphs over a large area, it is apparent that the vibration is coming from underground. All right, here is Newport, Washington, which is just north of Spokane, Washington. Notice the lines are a tiny bit thicker around the time of the tremor. I remember it subsided around 1600. Notice the line's getting a little bit thinner, but it barely, barely, barely showed on this graph at all. 
And here is Neilton Lookout near the coast of Washington State. And remember, December 5th, 3 o'clock UTC, and you notice around 1600, the lines start to get a little thinner. Notice up here, the thickness of the lines right there, that's during the peak of the tremor, or whatever it is. And notice how the lines get thinner and thinner. I don't know what this activity is. I have no idea what that is. I need to look that up. And if anybody out there knows, please uh, give a comment in the uh, comment box below. But apparently I was mostly incorrect about this tremor reoccurring. It did for a small time, but barely showed on neighboring graphs. Yellowstone definitely felt it, though. Oh, yes! And speaking of Yellowstone supervolcano caldera... Well, remember this microquake swarm that I mentioned? I don't know if it's connected to that strange tremor that we have been seeing off and on, but this started about half a day before the most recent long period tremor occurred. That was from Alaska to Yellowstone. Coincidentally, it did occur half a day before, and it showed at Mammoth Fault, Lake Butte, Little West Thumb, and Pitchstone Plateau. Also, the next day, a small swarm struck the Madison River Hebgen Lake area. This is Hebgen Lake. You can see there's a good maybe about 10, 15 earthquakes. It's hard to see because there's more in the Madison River area. See how it's felt the strongest here? See here that there are about 17 earthquakes, I'm going to say, within a four-hour period, which is busier than it has been lately in regards to earthquake activity. Now, on the other hand, volcanic and long-period activity has definitely been increasing, as well as hydrothermal activity. Now, check this out. This is what really pisses me off. I am legitimately irked right now. Here is Moose Creek, Idaho. Notice the extremely obvious P and S waves of this earthquake right here. Notice the sudden P wave right there. See that? That means it was very close to the park. I'm going to guess it was about, let's say, 3.5 magnitude, and according to the data, seems to have occurred somewhere southwest of Hebgen Lake. Between, in this area, right here. Had to have. Now here is Madison River. Notice the strong P wave indicating a very close earthquake. Plus, look at the extended coda. You see that? Obviously a Tornillo. And Mary Greeley has been talking about Tornillos uh, as well, so you should go check out her channel as well. And Dutchens, he's got some good stuff too. The fact that this was a Tornillo earthquake may be related to the fact that they did not report this. It is shocking. I say again, folks, they did not report this large quake. I mean, usually I see them not reporting like microquakes and such, but I actually, personally, I've never seen them not report an earthquake this large with such an extended coda that makes you think it's related to volcanic activity. All right, keep this in mind. Notice how it occurred about 150 UTC. See that? There's the 130 mark, which means the 130 mark is also right here. And you go over 20, 20 plus 30, that's 50. So about 150 UTC. Remember that. Keep that in mind. All right, guys, see here. This is America, the past seven days, all magnitude earthquakes. And here is the time when the quake should have been reported. Right here. See that? There's 157 UTC, 141. Nothing. Nothing at all. And I don't know why the earthquakes just disappeared right there. But you see that there is nothing at all reported for Yellowstone except a 1.6 at 212, which is not related to this earthquake because it obviously happened. Obviously happened at 150. See, the 1.6 is this right here. So they reported this quake right here, but they did not report this. Obvious. This is such an obvious quake. It was close to the park. Very close to the park. Like, come on, guys. Really? Why did you not report that? I think I know why they didn't report it. It's because it has a tornado wave. A screw wave, which Mary Greeley has been talking about a lot as well. The fact that it has an extended coda shows the signal either passed through magma or the quake itself was caused by magma intrusion. They are definitely trying to hide something because real scientists do not omit data. No matter what, neither should they lie. I mean, hello, science is supposed to be the pursuit of truth. But sadly, nowadays science has been about, become about secrets and theories, not facts. You ever hear of theoretical science? Theoretical science is apparently taking over real science for some weird reason. When science is supposed to be about facts, 
facts backing up theories, but that's not really how science is done anymore, sadly. Okay, this is Mount Sheridan. YMS, Mount Sheridan. On December 6th, around 1400 UTC and 1500 UTC. See these two events right here? The two long period events? I don't know what kind of surface noise can create such a signal. And I was originally thinking it was surface noise because of the extremely slow integration into the peak. You know what I'm saying? Like very slow. I've never seen a signal come upon the seismographs that slowly. But it literally did not show on any surrounding graph. So we must assume it's some strange surface activity, even though the characteristic of it is a little confusing and concerning. Because that does not look like any surface activity I've ever, ever witnessed. But since it didn't show up on any, any other graphs that I know of, we have to assume that it's surface noise. But then again, I am concerned because I've never seen surface noise appear this way, ever. So God knows what the hell that was. Well, guys, this is just a small update. And wow, yeah, we got a lot of venting going on at Yellowstone today. You know, someone once said, oh, hydrothermal activity isn't increasing. It's just because it's been cold lately. That's why the geyser have been seeming bigger. Okay, you know, I understand that, that a geyser will look larger than it really is due to the fact of cold. Because really, if you throw a bucket of hot water into the air during a really cold day, it's going to be a lot bigger than if you did on a hot day. You know what I mean? I understand that. But the thing is, there are nights here at Yellowstone when it's freezing and the geysers are popping off like crazy. And there will be other nights when it will be just as cold, but the geysers aren't doing anything. So there definitely is an increase in hydrothermal activity. A lot of venting today. I will try to put out another video about the SO2 emissions soon, but my wife is working a lot more now, so more of my time needs to be spent with the kids. I am extremely angry that the USGS, that they would not post this quake, especially with how large it was. I mean, we are their bosses. We pay them to lie to us? Isn't that ridiculous that we pay them for the truth, but they spew lies instead? And they think that we're idiots. Remember my video not too long ago about the USGS reply to my question? Well, remember how I sent back a reply to their reply? Guess what? Nobody emailed me back, and it's been almost a week. That sounds like a victory to me. Well, guys, there is more data I'm looking into, such as the massive lava magma rising underneath New England. I will upload another video as soon as possible, but this week is going to be extremely busy, especially with the kids. You know, I really thank you for the support, guys. And if I made any mistakes, or if you have constructive criticism, please email me or comment below. I am always searching for new ways to improve my videos and the data that I show people. And also, I'm not perfect. You know, I can't interpret all the data. You know, I, I'm still learning. But the thing is, is I can see when something is happening. When, when you see an obvious increase of activity and an obvious decrease of activity over multiple, multiple graphs, I mean... An ape can solve it. Seriously. I mean, you can seriously see an obvious increase and decrease at the same time from those tremors on November 28th over all those graphs. And plus, a lot of those monitors are under concrete, which means wind is not going to be affecting them. Weather cannot affect something that is protected by concrete. You know, I am always searching for new ways to improve everything. And I am open to this, guys, which is rare. Seriously, when was the last time you saw a YouTuber happily accepting criticism? But I'm just doing what Jesus would do, you know? God bless, guys, and thank you for all your support, and may Jesus Christ bless you all.